Hi, my name is Milan. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Today we're going to look at adding an employee um, from maybe two different angles. But let's just go and let's do it nice and quick and hopefully you will get some value from this. Okay, so here's the system now. So where do we go to add an employee? Um, we go here to employee management. We go to the employee side. And there's the list of employees. And add to new employee on the latest side. We go top. We click on new. And then it's going to open up all these different tabs. Let me just make the navigation pane a bit smaller. So there's all the tabs. Now there's actually two different tabs we're going to look at. Um, that's most important. The first one being, typically we discuss the basic information first, so let's call that tab 1. Um, and we start with the individual tab. Um, let's put in a Mr. Initials, and this will be mandatory information that's in red. And there's a surname, also of course mandatory. Um, I hope many of us in Africa will have an ID number. If you have an ID number, from there, it will default the date of birth. You can see I'm not doing slashes. I'm just doing typing in the numbers. Um, the racial group is Africa. That's mandatory for employment equity. Typically, things like um, country of birth and city of birth and ethnic groups, if it's not mandatory in your company, it's fine. Just because that it's a system doesn't mean you have to use every single field. Of course, you're going to use the fields that's important to your company. Okay, so that is basic information. Let's say tab one on the individual tab. Then we go over to the detail tab. Not, not my favorite screen will be the addresses. If we're fortunate enough with the addresses, we can use a sequence, and the sequence will be we click the new button, and immediately that's important. You'll select what it's for. Often we're lucky that it's the post, both a physical um, and a postal in the same time. And then at the bottom, it will change accordingly. Um, you put in your non-mandatory but um, useful um, information. So we put in the street. Um, you might put in a street number and a street name. And I'm just blasting past the mandatory field. Okay. If you are unlucky that it, the physical post is different, you might have done the same thing but selected physical, completed, then unfortunately you have to click new again. Immediately you select its postal, the next one, you press tab, you select PO box or whatever it's supposed to be, and you fill in your details. Other things you can add on this tab will be things like contacts, cell phone numbers, email addresses, um, bank details. Of course, if you're paying your pay people via ACB, you're going to click the new button. You put in the account numbers, you put in the account type. That's important to get that correct. Banks are finicky about that these days. Um, unlike with EFTs we do, the ACB files are finicky with that. That is correct. Um, the bank, let's say APSA, so the ELEC Universal Code, and that's how we do that. Um, interagentship is not a mandatory item, so I'm not going to explain that. It's a very nice field to select for people that are related to each other, the first contact people maybe as well. Permits, driver's license, just because it's on the system doesn't mean you have to use it. So I'm not going to discuss that in detail. And that's the most basic things you want to get onto the system on the basic information, which is the information the person will have without actually being employed. On the employment side, um, yes, I will select my company rule maybe. So it's a monthly or weekly. Let's make it simple. It's a monthly person. We put in the employee code. We check the date of engagement because it might be a pro rata person. We put in um, maybe things like branches and departments and provinces if, if, you, if you use that. And then we go to the second detail tab. On the detail tab, there's more main information. So there's actually our fourth tab. On the rules, we'll um, often be set up to have things like your employment contract, basic salary, cost to company. And that might be related to your employment contracts. And that will create a pacer for you. Not all systems have that, 
Um, in some systems, if you don't have that promotion definition data, it will just default stock standard earnings, stock standard deductions to the basic. So that's two different systems. So let's select the one with where the system is basic salary, and it sorted out the basic for us. Yes, we might do other things like job titles, job grades, if we have on the system. We might sort out then also the person's salary that we're going to pay the person. Um, that's for ma that's for guaranteed checks, so we don't have to worry about many of these items. I'll just quickly tap through them. So let's say most important would be, of course, to get the money on the system. If we go tax definition, stock standard often will be statutory tables, sometimes temporary part-time, but let's for this time just make it straightforward statutory tables. Statutory definition, this might be where you do your ETI linking. Often you're lucky that that is just stock standard as well. If you're using ETI, leave policy, yay, that's nice, easy, simple. You select it, it's supposed to default from there. And at this stage, we dealt with all the mandatory information so far. Okay. If there's any errors, if you have to backtrack a bit, so I hope you enjoyed this, hit the like and subscribe buttons. But if you have to backtrack with these things, normally you check on basic if there's red dots, individual detail if there's red dots, employee employment detail the three dots you fix it up to get to the point where you can save hope you enjoyed that um, please hit the like and subscribe buttons for more content to come your way um, hoping to create more content for us enjoy your day